Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another land vehicle. This one is great for exploring in survival mode and it's called the Rhino, which is this lovely thing sitting right behind me. This is armed with two assault cannon turrets, one Gatling gun turret, got some renewable power in the form of a solar panel, we've got a survival kit on the inside, a fancy door system where the doors will automatically open and close as the ramps are deployed and retracted, and we even have a piston system underneath that we can click with a press of a button from the outside to lift it off the ground to be able to do some repair work underneath it. We've got a few of the other basic utilities in the form of antennas and ore detectors, as well as a script that allows you to basically have indicators as you turn this vehicle around so anyone driving behind you knows exactly what you're doing. So press the F10 and find this in the spawn menu. The Rhino is 1,272 small blocks with a very small bit of information about it. And now with that spelling right there, I doubt it's going to rip you a new one, but 10 points if you get that reference. Anyway, give me this thing a thumbs up, we'll move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, have a tour of the interior, drive around for a bit, then maybe shoot some space pirates if they decide to spawn, if not we'll drive recklessly and crash it that way. So at the very front for the Rhino, this is what we get, and that's the camera front and center for us to get a good view of what's going on and what's coming up ahead of us. They got four spotlights to light up the darkness with two small interior lights that will act as our indicators as we drive the thing around. They've been set up on some blaster edge blocks with some letter blocks just from a bit of decoration. Then up and above here, all these windows is where our interior is sitting, where we can have our control seat to drive this thing around, and a bunch of standard seats for your passengers to come along with you. Moving around on the side, here we go. So we've got our lovely large wheels, we've got four of them on both sides, so if we lose one or two, we're going to be perfectly fine at still driving this thing around. And there's a few more windows along the side there. More fantastic use for our leather blocks, adding a small little hooks for you to grab hold of. And we'll climb up onto this vehicle, only in your imagination, of course. And then there's our piston with a magnetic plate on the bottom of them. Too well, put down to the ground, lift the vehicle up, to go underneath it to repair it up if we say it had a dodgy hit on a rock. This section right in front of us is our ramp and doorway to get inside. We have a handy little button that's sitting right above this section, so there it is right there. We'll press this, if I'll do it right now. So we're running all the way up to it. Here we go. Pressing that button, the ramp's now going to fold down and it'll work on both sides. The door will automatically open up. Now we're going to head up and inside. There we go, there's the door open on the opposite side. Pressing it again, the ramp's now fold up and then the door will close up right behind it. A very nifty little system that people come in and out. Anyway, back towards the back of this vehicle. Here we go, we see our turrets along the top. A spare wheel that we can grind up and use to replace any old wheels that got broken on our adventure. Around towards the very back here, here's our connector to dock it up. There's our lights which are currently blinking thanks to the script. They've got two fake gas canisters with a little X on the back of them. With two hydrogen thrusters help boost this thing around if we do need some assistance getting up a hill. We're around to this side very briefly. We then got a ladder which we can grind up if you want to. See there was a building that we wanted to hop up and get inside. We did not have the jetpack fuel to be able to go all the way up there with the jetpack. We can grind this off, attach it onto the building, build it all up with the resources from grinding this up. Then get up that way. Which is a handy thing to have on your adventure, because you never know if you're going to run out of fuel and will need to get up somewhere high. Now back around to here, looking down it, there's our spare wheel, there's our Gatling gun turret, ore detector, antenna, assault cannon turrets, there's our solar panel for a bit of renewable power. All the way down under this thing, here we go. Can't really see too much, but there's our buttons open and close the doors on each side. That's where all of our suspension's been connected up. And then at the back there, below our connector, is our other button, which could be from magnetic place on those pistons, to put them all the way down to the ground, like I said earlier. And with that, that's a brief look around the outside of the Rhino. It looks fantastic with how it's all been set up, and should prove very useful in survival mode, purely from looking at it from the outside. But now what I'm going to do is grab hold my character, up this button, in fact, we won't do that button just yet. What I will do, is I'll press this button down here to lift it up off the ground, because we cannot control this from the cockpit on the inside. So there we go, it lifts up, magnetic plates lock, and now we can easily just walk underneath this, not too much clearance above your head, but with the crouch, there we go. And we just weld all this up, and well, do whatever. So putting away my welder, come back over to this button, press now once again, it'll drop onto the ground, lift all the way up. Now we can come around to this button, press this, and I'll open it up and head on inside. So here you come all the way up, into the doorway, another button which does the exact same thing, same on the opposite side, pressing that, lifts up, and seals us inside. And this is what we get. So towards the back of the vehicle, we then got a survival kit, a bunch of gyroscopes, a small container on the side with a little seat for you to sit on. There we go. 
And turn towards the front there, some more seats for your passengers sit on, a bunch of windows appear outside, the impending doom coming towards you. Then at the very front of this thing, there's our seat to actually drive it around, but a co-pilot seat, who can currently do nothing. So getting into this, looking around here, here we go. That's all we can see, so we're going to be heavily reliant on that camera, or the third person view. But looking down to there, there's our horizon, there's some beats per second. And down to there, basically the exact same thing as up there. So coming to the third person view, bring up the HUD, we've got one tab to go through. Wait, number one's going to be your parking brake to turn it on and off. Number two is then for your ramps next to your door to open and close them. That will affect the doors as well. So lifting that all the way back up. And now they're closed. Pressing number three, that's for your interior lights around the ship. Turn them on and off if you need them. Number four is then for those two hydrogen thrusters to give you a little boost while driving this thing around. Number five is then for that camera in the front so we get a good view of what's going on. Number six is to change the targeting of your turrets. Very handy if you want to anti salvage stuff and just simply disable their weapons. Then number seven is for your ore detector on and off. Antenna on and off. And then a parachute if you get into a bit of a pickle, jumping off a cliff. How about that? Undoing the parking brakes, moving forwards, and this is what we get. So as you can see, it's not the fastest thing in the world, just shooting off off the band. We are creeping up to about 50 meters per second, and it seems like we're going to cap out before we hit 50 meters per second, unless we're going to use our thrusters to get a bit more speed. There we go. With the undo the thrusters once again, slam on the brakes. There's no risk of this thing flipping over if we were to do an emergency brake. That's always a handy thing to know. Doing a tight little turn, all the way around. It feels a bit jittery, but once again, it's firmly on the ground. So there's no risk of this thing randomly flipping over, if we do need to do some emergency maneuvers. And as for that, that's pretty much it for all this vehicle has to offer. Very self-explanatory what it does. So the only thing I can think left to do is to remove the speed limit, increase the power to the wheels, and we'll drive it to destruction, and hopefully we'll get a nice big explosion for the end of this. And here we go, I've removed the speed limit, so got unlimited speed, the thrust has been turned on, we're now doing 90 meters per second, and this thing is surprisingly impressive, with the fact that it hasn't randomly exploded yet. It looks like we might be able to get all the way up to 100, and I have a feeling that in the distance will be the end of this vehicle, maybe, maybe not, it seems to be extremely solid, but driving around at very high speeds. Oop, that looks like a small little, well, I'm not actually too sure what happened there, but we survived it, I didn't damage anything, so that's extremely impressive that well, this seems to be crash proof, at least in my hands. So we're going to do that one more time, boosting all the way forwards. I was hoping to get up to this mountainside up here, or this little ramp, to actually do big jump. But it doesn't look like we're going to get much speed going all the way over to this. And didn't really look like it was a cliff edge, which was what I was hoping it was going to be. So we come across this rocky terrain. Again, it seems extremely solid. First person view, this is what it looks like. A lot more scarier than third person view, especially when we're bouncing around here. But again, we're coming up to about 80 meters per second, slowly creeping up to 90. And this is doing an absolute fantastic job while surviving a reckless drive. So to actually finish off this video, what I'm going to do now is hold down X to put the wheels all the way up. Now we're going to do jump. And that did absolutely nothing. I am very disappointed in that. So we're going to come up to this and we're just going to ramp over it. So let's go and do a backflip and actually end this poor little vehicle. So here we come all the way around. I don't believe this. How on earth did that survive? <laughs> it looks like we have damaged some block. At least I heard something blow up. Maybe we lost our thrusters and the bank. Hopefully this will destroy the vehicle. And no, it did not. But no, that was extremely impressive that that survived. Extremely impressive that it had the airtime it did. So all I'm going to do now, get out of this, plop down a warhead, and then that will truly be that for this video. So here we go, I've planted a bunch of small warheads on the inside here, the timer has been set, they're all armed to explode, any second now, this should hopefully be the end of this vehicle, and there we go, that was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be, but it still somehow survived in some form, we've got one wheel there, a couple of blocks that we can salvage if we want to, a little bit of ice, and yes, that's finally it for the Rhino, a surprisingly almost indestructible vehicle that should do very well on any planet in survival mode. So if you link to it in the description below, you should download and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do, because it's a fantastic little vehicle. I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.